Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to prove a useful property of convergent sequences, namely that they are going to be bounded from both above and below. So in the problem, we're given a, a sequence A, which we know converges to L. And let's write down quickly uh, what that means again. So since A converges to L, then we know there exists, oops, there exists an eventually function. So we have a function m from our domain of closeness, right, telling us how close we want to get to L, to the integers, which of course this is our codomain of eventually, tells us how far out we need to go in the sequence, uh, such that uh, if epsilon is some positive real number, right, any positive real number we like, and if you go past the eventual a number for epsilon, then the distance between the nth term in the sequence for a and the proposed limit l is less than epsilon. Okay, our goal is to show that there is some number above all the terms in the sequence a, as well as some number below all the terms in the sequence a. So how do we do that using this definition for convergence? Well, remember, this was going to work, right? This We can bound the distance between am and l um, by epsilon for any epsilon we like. So let's just choose one, right? And by choose one, I, I mean literally, well, we just choose epsilon equals to one. It's not actually an important choice. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to choose it uh, so that it reduces the number of strokes I have to make with the pen. All right. So set epsilon equal to one, then we know for all m greater than the eventually number for one. So if we go out far enough, and m of one tells us exactly how, what that means, if we go out far enough, then we have that the distance between a m and l is less than one. Okay, so maybe we will draw a little picture here. So this would be height L, and then I'm going to put a band above and below where, okay, the distance to L going up should be 1, so this will be L plus 1, and the distance below should be 1, so this will be L minus 1. And so the definition of convergence says that once we get past the eventually number, Okay, so this is our eventually number, m of 1. Once we get past that point in the sequence, then everything has to lie in between these bounds. Okay, maybe it goes above L, maybe it goes below L, but it has to lie in between L plus 1 and L minus 1 once we get past m of 1, which tells us that for all of the values of m past m of 1, the values of the sequence, A, are going to be less than L plus 1 and greater than L minus 1. Right, so let's, let's record that. So for all M greater than M of 1, we have that AM is less than L plus 1 and is greater than L minus 1. Now remember our goal, our goal was to show that our sequence was bounded from above and below. And we might be tempted at this point to say, well, look at that, right? The terms in our sequence are bounded from above by L plus 1 and bounded from below by L minus 1. Well, we do have this little condition here, though, right? We have to go out far enough in the sequence. It might be that before you get to m of 1, you have some points which are either above or below, or maybe even both, l plus 1 and l minus 1. So we haven't quite found a bound yet. However, it would make sense, right? So we can say, thus, the sequence a is maybe not bounded by l plus 1 and l minus 1, but eventually bounded. by L plus 1 
plus one from above, and L minus one from below. Okay, this is not um, essential to the proof. However, it's a really good thing to notice, and this will uh, come back uh, later on when you talk about things like uh, limb soups and limb imps, whatever those are. All right, well, what do we do to actually get a bound? Well, the beauty here is that even though you may have things that go above L plus 1 and L minus 1 before you get to M of 1, there's only a finite number of terms before you get to M plus 1. So we can define, let's call, uh, how about we'll say U, for, this is going to be our upper bound, we're going to define u to be the max value of all of the terms a1, or maybe we'll start at 0, who knows where it starts, a0, a1, through a m of 1. Okay, These are all of the places where we don't know what the value is. It's only past m of 1 that we know things are between l plus 1 and l minus 1. And then let's toss in l plus 1. So we're just going to take the biggest of all of these values, and we will then know that every term in A, well, we know once you get past M of 1, everything is less than L plus 1, but maybe one of these is bigger, right? or more than one, but whichever one is the biggest, that will be an upper bound if it was even bigger than the L plus 1 to begin with. All right? So we have, now let me call this A sub N, a sub n is less than or equal to u now for all n, not just for the ones past m of 1, because if it was, well, again, if it was bigger than L plus 1 somewhere, it's got to show up in one of these first m of 1 terms. And, okay, whichever one was the biggest, that's what we set to be our u. Of course, to get a lower bound, uh, and of course we've, we've already used a capital L, so why don't we uh, use a lower L, We'll make this the minimum of a0, a1 through a, m of 1, and then let's toss in big L minus 1, right? That would be the lower bound once we get past m of 1. And we're going to have that a sub n is greater than or equal to little l, the lower bound for all n. And therefore, u is our upper bound and l is our lower bound.